Hello, my friend. This is Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Centered Ministries, where our focus is centered on the harvest of the world. And where we can't go by air, we go by prayer. We hear a lot of good messages, but is there a word from the Lord? I got good news for you, my friend. There is a word from the Lord. So stay tuned. Pay close attention as we prepare now to go into the word. Amen. It's very important that I do so. Amen. Hosea chapter number 6. Old Testament. Amen. Right after Daniel. Amen. Now, some people might not know. <laughs> Amen. They might not know. They might not know. I, I just love the spiritual maturity in here as well. How many know you can come right out of something like that and you can still laugh? And I, just, I love that. I love that. I love that. Amen. God is still God. He's still here. He's still moving. Amen. And he don't need your help. Amen. So Hosea chapter number six. Amen. Verse number three. Say, then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter rain and the former, former rain unto the earth. Amen. And the topic of the message is mom already said it. Where do we go from here? I mean, that's a very serious question. Where do we go from here? And I just read you the answer. We just keep going what we're doing. Amen. We'll know the, the fullness of the, the purpose and the will of God as we continue on to know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How many know that relationship is key to everything? How many, how many know you can never get away from the relationship? It's all about the relationship, the connection, the fellowship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. He's your very connection to the Father. Amen. But he said, then shall we know if we follow on to know. And God has already prepared it. He says, prepared as the morning is prepared. How I many know if, the, if tomorrow don't tear, the morning is going to be here. As long as you follow on to know the Lord, your preparation for the future is there. It's already prepared for you. That's why it's so important that you stay in the right relationship with Jesus. Amen. We're going to begin to lift up Jesus this year like we never had before, before this year end. We got to lift up and magnify the name of Jesus Christ. How many know we live in day and time? You don't even hear the name of Jesus like you're supposed to. Jesus, amen, because there's power in the name of Jesus. Things are effective when you speak the name of Jesus. Demons begin to tremble at the name of Jesus Christ. And I love how y'all was pray praising God. I didn't want to stop you because I remember a message I was preaching how when they begin to praise God, amen. Jehoshaphat, he began to set ambushments in a, you know, on upon the enemies. And when you praising God in the realm of the spirit, God has set up ambushments against your enemies. Praise is so important. Praise is so vital to warfare. People don't even know it. You confuse the enemy. The devil can't stand your praise, especially you praising God when you really should not be praising God because of your physical circumstances. Amen. But how many know that's the best praise that you could ever give God? That praise that you do not feel like giving him. I mean, how many know that's our, in this day and time, that's our sacrifice unto him. But children of God, he said, you know, if you follow on to know. Amen. It's time to make some history again. Amen. Amen. We got to make some history. We got to leave, you know what I'm saying, something for our generation that's following up behind us. How many of us thinking about that? There's a generation that's coming behind. We're leaving something. We got to leave something. We got to leave some spiritual inheritance. We got to get help get this church back. I'm not talking about the world harvest center ministry, but the church, the body of Christ. Back to the place that it's supposed to be. We got to get the power back. We got to get the prayer back. We got to get the fasting back. We got to get the respect back. Amen. But it's going to require some sacrifice. It's going to require you to kill this filthy, nasty flesh. Amen. How many know I love praises? I love that. I ain't really want to stop. But I had to give the people a word. I don't want to stop because I understand the benefits of it. Just getting into the presence of God. You could get more done just getting into the presence of God. Amen. How many know you can hang out with God, fellowship with him of such, man? When you come out of his presence, you'll have his fragrance on you. You could just step in the room, whatever was wrong, it has to be right because you just came out the literal presence of God. That's why I always put emphasis here at the ministry. Jesus Christ is literally in the midst right now. He's here. I gave him an example on Friday night, how we come to church. I could pray for somebody's ankle, you know, right now. I'm praying for you. That ankle is in pain right now. And they'll just receive the little prayer. But do they really believe? If I pray for your ankle, you believe that Jesus is here right now, you'll get up without me telling you. You'll begin to try that thing out. 
So we got to get back to that. We're so spoiled. We're so pampered in the, in the United States of America. I thank God I have the pleasure to travel to Africa, and you really get to see what this thing is about. I was talking to a brother the other day, or yesterday, I believe, when I went to Haiti. It was a young man. He was coming to service every night with the same clothes on. Uh, his shoes was busting out the side of his, his foot was busting out the side of his shoe. But he was in that choir every night, praising God. Brung tears to my eyes. And we sit here in America, we got so much, we're so blessed. And we got, come on, come on, y'all put your hands there. Come on, come on, lift them up right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on now. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Y'all can do better than that. Man, it's time out for that stuff, man. Come on, come on. Come on, lift them up right now. And I, I be getting on my own nerves sometimes saying that stuff. <laughs> Used to do minister worship. I be like, Lord, I feel crazy right now. But I know the man of God, no dad, like, I got to get the atmosphere right. I'm like, but in my mind, I'm like, these people don't want to. <laughs> do y'all, I literally, my wife would tell you, I gave up minister worship for a while. Y'all might not have noticed, but I stepped back. I just, I just, it just got, it just got, you know, my spirit was just getting, man, I'm like, man, these people don't want to praise God, man, I ain't got time for this, but you know, when God calls you to do something, you're chosen to do something, he'll put you right back in there, and if, if you love God, you'll get back, because you just, you're not going to feel right, amen, but we have to boost you, we have to pry you, we have to pump you up, we have to say all these little cliche things, and you know, the little scripts, the highlight scripts, no weapon for them to get, just to get you to praise God, and, 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 and that's a shame. That's a shame, man. I, 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 what I'm trying to do, I, I keep thanking God, Mom, for the, the, the beginning. Because you're able to teach people, you know, these things in the beginning. And I learned something. If you be hard on people in the beginning, it's easy to get soft if you start out hard. But if you start out soft, it's almost impossible to clamp down on these people. So sometimes here at World Harvest, I'm a little forced, but they'll tell you. But I understand it's coming out of love. Because if you really love somebody, it agitates you when they're, when they're walking in their potential. It agitates you when they're not getting what you uh, know they should be receiving at a, at a point in their life. Because those are the ones that came from our past men. We've been in the ministry over 20 plus years. It's, it's some things I shouldn't have to tell you. You should be carrying. Don't you know you are the carrier? You carry the ark. You know, you, you have the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Amen. I mean, so I, I, I just want to just tell you, saints, that's here at World Harvest Center Ministry. It's time for us to make some ministry, uh, some history in this ministry, history in this world, history in this city. And a lot of things God taught me uh, in the beginning, you know, like how people are fickle, number one. But focus on what's our purpose. What's our part? Everybody has a part. What's our part in Jacksonville? What's my part in the world? We can't do everything. You understand what I'm saying? Number one, you won't be effective. But then you'll never do what God really called you to do. So here we see, here in this ministry, God, what is our part in Jacksonville? You know, where, what's our territory? Even though we're working together, we're one. But how many know even in the military, you know, you got the, aim, the, the Marines, the Navy, the Army. They all have one goal to protect this country, but they all have different assignments. How many know that takes maturity? You got to understand. Yeah, we're in this thing together, but I got an assignment. What is your assignment? Because that's the only way, and I'm talking to preachers in here too, that's the only way you're really going to be effective when you find out what God has chosen you to do. Amen. Amen. And that's what I, I, I've been coming up on studying and God been putting in my spirit even before I begin this ministry because he, I really believe that we don't have as much time, you know, to make all the mistakes that people have made. You understand what I'm saying? Because the time is short. Jesus Christ is soon to come. So something, he's going to fast forward me. It has nothing to do with me, but, you know, he got to fast forward, you know, so I'm fast forwarding. I remember sitting in my dad and dad's office sometimes. He's like, Elder, how you know that? I'm like, I don't know that. You know, I mean, I mean get, maybe God just anointed me. You know, I can't take no credit. Because some things I wouldn't know. But now I understand why I knew the things that I knew. It was for this time. This for this time. It wasn't for that. You know, it wasn't for that time. But it was for this time that we're in right now. Let's go to Galatians chapter number 6. I know I'm moving a little fast. Amen. But I got to give y'all what does say the Lord. And we got to go eat. I do want to invite <laughs> those of you. We're going to go to Carabas. That's right here in the River City. Everybody's welcome. We got some cake. I want y'all to get your little cake, you know. Amen. Get your little cake. But I'm a little hungry right now. So you know how that goes. So we're going to get through this message right here. The God is still God, even through my hunger. But Galatians chapter number 6, and we're going to begin reading at verse number 6. Everybody have it? Please signify it by saying amen. 
Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. How I many you know that's a, we need to stop right there? We can stop right there. <laughs> whatever you sow, amen. God said you're going to reap. That's good or bad. So, I mean, you know, we need, we need to do some repentance. Maybe we need to sow some good things. Sow some good things. Sow some good seeds. Sow some love. Sow some forgiveness. Sow some long suffering. Sow some mercy. How I many you know? Because we're going to need those things returned back to us. Amen. Amen. And, 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 you know, if you just focus on the spirit that's behind uh, individuals that's doing certain things, it would be easy to forgive them. It's the devil. Don't forget who our ultimate enemy is. Remember in the prayer, I told y'all, I told them, I said, y'all always listen, I always teach you. But we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Right. With the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. Right. You see what I'm saying? The devil, he uses people, but it's the, it's the devil, it's the enemy, it's his demons that are, that's up against us. I had to forgive people that did me a job because I understood that, that principle, it was easier. Not saying it was easy, but it was easier. Because some people have been deeply scarred right in church. Got young women that have been molested, uh, people, uh, pastors that slept with other people's wives. And it's some things that you, it's kind of hard than other things to forgive. So you can't be playing like it's just so easy. But when you focus on it, you really know who your enemy is. He comes to kill, he comes to steal, and he comes to destroy you. That's his only motive that he has for your life. In a way, he's so successful because he does it through stuff that you like. Hmm? He do it through stuff that you like. Stuff that's pleasing to this flesh. How many know everything good is not good for you? How many know sometimes you need to think about this too? It might not sound, but everything look like God is not God. I'm going to go a little deeper. Everything sound like God is not God. And you got to learn that in this day because this are, these are the last of the last days. Hmm? And if Jesus don't come when he come, man, even if his very elect could be the seed, we could be the seed. The one that think we on point because the devil got tricks, you know, he can't even use in the earth. This man was, this God, that we're not a man, this spirit, the devil was in heaven with God. With angels that seen God, all his majesty, all his glory. And he was able to deceive them to make them leave that. That's who we up against. And we watching TV all day long. The devil ain't taking no breaks. Mom just said he walking up. He, 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 stand, he walking up to and fro up in the earth seeking, seeking who he made a vow. And he's very strategic with it. If I get this one. That one right there is tied to, he's tied to a thousand. If I get, oh, he's the, that's how he works. He works like that. But look, but us, we so ignorant in the spirit. We so ignorant when it comes to spiritual things of God. He said, but be not to see God is not mocked for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Oh, here we go right here. That's my key verse. This is for the saints here at World Harvest Center Ministries. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In order for this scripture to be written in the Bible, that's going to know, that's to let you know there's going to be some times you are going to be weary. There's going to be some times coming up in this ministry you want to give up. It's going to be some times coming up, even me as your pastor, you're not going to agree with me. But going back up to Hosea 6, then shall you know if you follow on to know the Lord. Keep your relationship right. God will begin to speak to you. Even when you don't understand it, sometimes just shut your mouth. Just be quiet. Amen. And just follow the course of time. And then a lot of times you'll come out and say, oh, okay, I understand. I didn't see that then. You're not going to see everything that I see. Amen. Because you're not the one that God has anointed to lead the flock. So every, you're not, that's why I'm the leader. I'm out front. I'm, gonna, I'm supposed to see farther than you can. And that's when people make the mistake. They try to be on the same level as the pastor. Amen. I see what you see. You, no, nah, you don't understand that. What you mean? <laughs> God don't operate that. God is not the author of confusion. Amen. You ain't going to have two heads sitting in the house operating at the same time. It don't work like that. 
Amen. So God always knows there's going to be some time you ain't gonna, you're not going to understand. But if you, uh, one thing I learned, because I knew our Father in God would love God. If it was anything that I made him understand or thought he should do another way, I say, God gave me a right. I say, God, he loves you. All I got to do is pray to you. And I know he loves you. If you tell him, he'll change. If you got a man of God that's really after the heart of God, just pray for him. Pray for him. There's some things I went to a man of God and prayed about and prayed about. Then we talked, and then he, he, he was like, he changed his mind. But I knew God that did it. I was like, wow, Dad, for real? But I was like, <laughs> in my mind, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Amen. But, but that's because you got a man of God that's after, after the heart of God. Just pray. Stay in your place. Stay in your lane. I learned that very early in ministry. Amen. I thank God for one of the elders. I won't call his name. You call one name. Once you call everybody name. But I thank God for one of the elders. You know, he, that's one of the lessons he taught me and that, that stuck with me. He said, elder, was I elder? He said, well, young man or minister, whatever I was, he said, learn how to stay in your lane. Amen. And that thing took me through the course of ministry, man. Because I was, it was one time I was real zealous. You know, you got a heart for ministry. You got a heart for your man of God. And stuff not going right. You try to do everything. Amen. That's not a wise decision. That's not wise. Stay in your lane. Get in the presence of God. Pray about it. Amen. And then how many to know that um, in this ministry grow? Well, I thank God for this brother right here. I tell him all the time, man, it's so important, man, for you to, to, to learn me. You know? Because it's going to be his responsibility and other brothers that come up under me to teach them what I'm teaching y'all. That makes my job more easier. Amen. And, and I, I was teaching you some little things that I learned. You know, even when your man of God talked to you, a lot of times not for you to say nothing. Just listen. I know mean, my, my father and God would try to talk. I would try to say my mouth wouldn't open, but the Holy Ghost wouldn't even let me open my mouth. And then I learned. I'm like, he don't need you to, he don't need your opinion. He just needs you to listen to him. I learned that. So a lot of times, and another thing I like to teach this man right here, thank God for him. 98% of the thing I learned from my father in the gospel, a lot of people don't even know it. It was through observation. It wasn't verbal. He didn't say, oh, okay, now you A, B, you do this, do that. It was just observation. Observation of watching his actions, observation of listening. He was a very wise man. He would teach you over the pulpit all the time. Never, thank God, never went to marriage counsel. He counsels all the time on marriage over the pulpit. That's how you know if people are listening a lot. Well, if you got a counsel line that's yay long, I ain't paying you no attention. <laughs> he went over everything. He taught you about life. I mean, I say that humbly, but we never had, we knew how to work it out. Because he had already, and then if you really, if you're really in tune with God, I mean, he'll, he'll talk about your household in the pulpit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he'll do it. So much, I mean, sometimes be to the point, now, wait a minute. Now, now I told so-and-so. And he is kind of close to passing. <laughs> you know, I'm just being real. Am I telling the truth? I'm telling you, sometimes the Holy Ghost, he's just that, he's just that accurate. He's in there. And, and especially when you got a small ministry, I have to, I have to retract myself. I'm saying, look, let me tell you something. You know, because they're small. It's only, you only, at one point, I had like four people. <laughs> they were like, come on now, Pastor now. <laughs> I, I used to preach looking this way. I ain't want to look nobody in the eye. Because like, I'd be talking about some things, a person that I know it's going to hit somebody, but man, it, it's easy when you got a crowd like this. You know, you know, you say whatever God has given you to say, but I still say it with dust there for the Lord. But I'm going to always have to tell you guys the truth. Amen. Sometimes it's going to hurt you. Sometimes it's not going to make you feel good. But understand what real love is. Amen. That's real love. Amen. So I just want to encourage these saints with 1 Timothy. Don't turn now. We got to go. I got to eat. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 12. Say, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. There we go again. It's about eternal life. And I'm not going to stop saying it. It's about eternal life. It's about having that relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't be getting caught up in no positions right here, around here. No, just do the work. Amen. Just love God, and, and God will begin to love people through you. Amen. A lot of people don't even know this. I didn't have a, a, a personal uh, relationship with my pastor until 2009. Up until 2009, he didn't, all he knew of me was a faithful member. 
And how I got to be around him, somebody told him what I was doing on the streets. It was my work. But a lot of people just think, I, I, didn't, he didn't, I didn't ask him for his phone number. One day he called me about something, and I didn't keep it then. He called, I was on the way. He called me about something, uh, something about church or van or something like that. You know, I always want, he always wants you to work. It was something about work. <laughs> and you can't be, you can hang around him if you want no worker. I remember one time, one time he, one time he had me out real late. You know, I was like, what? He was like, man, we need to go ahead and take it on in, Elder. I said, Dad, I'm good. I, you know, I got some time on the books. He said, no, man, you need to go to work. He wasn't with that, you know. So he was working. So I was on the way to church. He had called me about some, doing some work in the church trying to find something. It was amazing. I was shocked. I was, oh, man, you got my phone number. I was like, this pastor. I was so scared, you know. And then I heard his man of God. And then, then he called me. Uh, on the way to church, on uh, it was 9 a.m. I, I see it. I see it right. These things are special to me now. Y'all can imagine. <laughs> he said, he said, yeah, uh, elder. I said, yes, sir. He said, oh man, this this my personal number, man. He said, keep that just in case you want to chit chat. I ain't called him. And I don't know how long it was before I called him. You don't do that. You understand what I'm saying? My wife, I would call. I would be counseling. I'm like, babe, God giving me something for pastor, but. You know, I, I, you know how I pray about it. I ain't just want to text him. I, mean, I had to make sure if I felt something encouraging to, to, uh, to send him on a text or something, I had to make sure that it was really from God. You had to be I had, I, I, But I learned that stuff earlier. I'm, I'm, te I'm teaching them now. You know, even if you do, you know, anybody can have a number now. <laughs> I ain't no, you call, you come, you come to my house, you know, whatever. You know, <laughs> what y'all want to do, you know. <laughs> I, you know, but, but man, once you begin to grow, you understand what I'm saying? That's kind of stuff. You got to understand that now early. As I used to call that. He done got his number chain. Up. I, can't count, I can't talk to You got 500 people calling you. I remember dad used to tell me, to my elder, man, I just got an enormous amount of, um, unusual amount of texts right now. You know, <laughs> no, he was, and he returned every one of them. I used to tell him, dad, you ain't got to do that. <laughs> He'll return every single text. Now I got a problem with people right now. These preachers ain't got but five people in their church. They so busy, they couldn't call me back. I get an attitude. That's for me. I'm like, Joker, you ain't got but five members. What you mean you were busy? <laughs> busy doing what? Here this man got a mega ministry known all over the world. Pastors calling from each corner of the world in the United States. And I text him. He texts me back every time. It might be the next day. He said, I just, I'm sorry, I just got your text. But yeah, we'll take care of that. We'll do that. I learned from that. Man, you stay humble, man. Okay, how high or how far God take you? You understand what I'm saying? We got to, man, y'all better learn from me because it's going to help you in the future. It's going to help you stay grounded. This kind of stuff, it kept me grounded. I, I didn't get taken away like a lot of men of God and, you know, brothers that came around me got caught up in the wrong things. They got caught up in the glamour of ministry, in the position, in the name calling, in the prestige and stuff. I, I'm on witness. I say, like, Dad, you calling my name. That's bringing me a lot of heat, man. I, you know, I'm like, <laughs> I said, that's bringing me a lot of heat because you just call my name so much. You know the thing he told me? Oh, get used to it, fella. That's how he used to do me. I, I thought he was going to stop. <laughs> it seemed like he started doing it more. But that man, it was people. It, it brings it brings something to me, man. It brought a lot of heat to me, a lot of envy and jealousy and stuff like that. I thank God for the men that were men enough. They came to me and say, "Man, I got to admit, I didn't like you at first because I thought you were a certain way." He said, "But now that I got to, you know, I got to work with different people at different times and men." He said, "Man, I understand that you're not you're not like that." Amen. I, and I respected. It. I didn't get angry or nothing like that. I respected that. Amen. And these people, I had. I was carrying these people along, putting them in position, they, you know, doing stuff for them, and I didn't even know they didn't even like me. I'm vouching for them and, you know, just vouching for them and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I didn't try to hog, you know, pass them. I would get certain ones. I'd be like, Dad, you mind a certain one ride with us when I go taking the pre? Just trying to bring, you know, just, you know, man. I'm like, Wow. See, you, sit, you know, you, don't, you, were, you were up in ministry before I got up in ministry and some, some kind of way you may have got discouraged or something like that. So I bring them back up, you know, try to put them on. And, and man, and people, those are some people that didn't like me. <laughs> they didn't even like, look at me in my eyes. And they didn't even like me. 
They didn't even like me. But I thank God that God gave me a little tough skin. A little tough skin. Amen. And, th- and if you are right, that's in the, going back to the relationship. If you really have that relationship with God, you'll be able to get through these things. Amen. You won't fall in them little, I call them churchism. Little churchism, little traps and stuff in the ministry and stuff like that. You won't fall in that. So y'all got to let y'all know, thank God for what you have right now. But if we keep preaching Jesus, how many know we're going to attract the crowd? Amen. Amen. You're going to always be special. You ain't got to be in my face. I got, now these are, I know my real, I got some friends right now, uh, we might not talk in three months, and we'll call each other, we'll get right back. We out, we doing, we, it's like we never miss the beat. Ain't about you guys, I ain't got to be in a certain one's face all the time. I had another guy, we just ate breakfast yesterday. We hadn't talked in I don't know how long. We, we, we clicked right back up, you know, just doing like, you know, it, you know, because it, it, people have pervert things. I've done it in the past. My wife used to tell me, like, y'all got to do everything together. Sure enough, we broke up. <laughs> Friendship broke up. She used to tell me, that one me to see. See, when your wife tell you stuff sometimes, especially if you're a man of faith, it just seems negative. Because at that <laughs> like, man, don't, like they fighting against you. That's what it feels, I know better now, but it felt like she was, she was fighting against me. I'm like, man, you with me or what? Say so everything I, I do, every idea, you shooting it down. She like she was shooting it down, but everything that she said, it came out just like that. It came out on the negative end. It happened so much, now I listen. But it, I, a lot of things I went through, I, I, I didn't have to go through if I would have just listened the first time. So men, listen to your, your wife. Especially you got to know you got a wife that's praying. I ain't talking about some of y'all need to pray for your wife. But if you got a wife, you know, that's praying, you know she got a real relationship with God, and she's with you in ministry and been with you from the beginning, listen to your wife. She loves you. Ain't nobody going to ever have your back like your wife or a husband or a wife. You know, I, that's what encouraged me in ministry. You know, if, if I'm feeling nobody with me, I'm going to look right in this corner. I know my baby praying for me and nobody else ain't. You understand what I'm saying? So, so, so nurture those relationships that you have. You know, and sometimes ministry got people separated. Out of, you know, even in marriage, I've seen that. Pattern their life, their marriage after somebody else's marriage. Don't do that. Don't pattern your life after me and my wife's life. What work in my house might not work in your house. And then you're going to blame me when your house spill up. I would do doing that. Pastor pa- pa- do that. Pastor do that. First lady do it. You don't know every marriage, every household, every marriage is different. Amen. It sounds it sound elementary, but y'all be surprised, man. These are the problems that we have in churches. These are the problems we have. This kind of stuff I used to have to deal with all the time. Amen. Because I, the, to God, because I was an elder and understood what an elder's responsibility really was. I had my job. That's why I never, even though that I never wanted to be, that never really entered my mind to pass. I didn't know that I'd be doing this. I say it all the time, and I continue to say it. My desire was to be, you know, a missionary, just to travel all around the world. And those y'all from Thailand, y'all know I would go overseas and do stuff like that. That was my desire to do those things. Never know that I'd be right here as a pastor. Amen. But those, these are very key points that we need to um, grasp hold on to. But as an elder, man, I knew my purpose. My purpose was to help the man of God pastor the church. So I ain't had no desire anyway to go out. He need help to help pastor. That's your job. To, you know, to pass, to help the pastor pass, to help him counsel, help him do, you know, everything that he does, you do it. As, you know, under him, you do that. And that's why I'm going to be teaching that. I'm teaching him that. I'm saying this stuff. I'm teaching him that. I'm teaching these guys that. So he won't have no, okay, now you don't preach your first little message now. Because he be, <laughs> I let him minister sometime. I said, give me five minutes. <laughs> I said, Frank, I wanted two minutes, man. Come on, man, it was. It was, man, I thought. <laughs> but because when you first started ministry, man, you think you up there for eternity. I used to do it all the time. I used to do it all the time, man. I thought I'd been up for an hour. I ain't preached for 10 minutes. And then I don't know what to do. My whole mess is gone. That was all I had. <laughs> That's all I had. You know, so now I'm making up stuff. Now, now I'm talking about, come on, come on, y'all lift your hand. Come on. Come on, let's glorify God. Come on, come on. <laughs> you know, my whole mess is gone by then. But they just tell him that those things so he won't, his eye, when I used to teach leadership class at, up in the balcony, you know, those that would come. <laughs> I used to always point down to the pool field. I say, you see that right there? That's not yours. That's not your ultimate goal. You know what I'm saying? Our pool pit is in the street. 
and if it if it's if it's your part if it's your if it's for you to get there, it's the work that's gonna put you there. Amen. And some of them got there that shouldn't have been there. It messed them up, man. It messed them up. Move one crowd, now they go on the pastor. And then one time God used one, I mean, this is great. And somebody's talking, man, that's a pastor. I say, man, he ain't no, just because he can preach, just because you can preach, that does not make you a pastor. It's more, it's more ingredients than going in there. This is the easy part right here. You understand? People don't, people don't understand that, man. This is, a, this is somebody that has been chosen by God before the foundation of the world. You know, this, is not no, this ain't no easy thing right here. And I'm just getting started. It's nothing easy about it. There's really nothing easy about it. I mean, as soon as you accept this call or you walk into what God has chosen you to do, immediately you're going to have some resistance, you understand, in the spirit realm. And the only thing that will keep you in that thing if you're really chosen and called to do it. Amen. Because why? He's already prepared it like the morning. Your place, your destiny is already prepared for you. Just stay in the relationship. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. But you got to stand still. I'm almost done. If the Lord is telling you to stand still, it's the enemy's job to move you. This is Pastor Anton Brunson of World Harvest Center Ministry. We appreciate you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. Oh, you want to keep tuning in. We're going to be getting to the nitty and the gritty. Amen. We're going to be teaching about how to be delivered, how to be set free, how to receive your healing from the Lord. But right now, I want you to continue to tune into the Word. Wait, hey, I knew somebody. I knew they were supposed to be a part of our church. I knew they was, you know, and I prayed for them to get in. God answered my prayer and brought them there. And they would say, you must have been praying because they, re- they, got, they real got spirituality. They understand. You must have been praying for me. I said, why you say that? God told me to come join the church. Then they come join the church. I don't think they stayed a month. I'm like, God, God don't operate like that. God ain't going to tell you. God don't change his mind like that. God sent me to your ministry, then three months later, you gone. God lead you somebody else. You're confused. That's double-mindedness. Then that's James 1 and 8. A double-minded man or woman, you're going to be on a statement all your ways. No one person like that, they're always changing jobs. <laughs> they're falling out with different friends. You'll see it in every aspect of their life. You'll just see it. You'll know a double-minded person. You'll know an unstable person. You'll know a person that's wavering, driven with the wind and talk, following with every wind and doctrine. You'll know that person. Through all their action. But if God puts you here, what I'm trying to tell you is the enemy's job to fight you. He's going to try to uproot you out of here. And even this message right here, he's still going to be successful with some people. Amen. But just know that if God puts you in a place, the enemy's going to fight you. Y'all don't think the enemy tried to, I never said, I was, I was steadfast on moving, you know, in our ministry. You know, been around over 20 plus years. But you don't think the enemy tried to, to, to hurt me. He used hurt. You know, different ones I look up to in ministry. I was very, y'all were probably, I was very, very shy, very timid. They even told me that. You know, they're talking like I don't hear them. I, do, I had a tent revival. I was going to do a, uh, a um, do minister of worship. They, I'm standing right here. They're like, who doing minister of worship tonight? And they were telling them who it was. You told know him? He timid? Tell me, that timid? Y'all I'm like, man, you know, I'm hurt. I, I used to get hurt like that. I used to go to, uh, Try to help. They'll tell me to come help the church. Y'all remember when we used to do Shekinah? We were still on Beach Boulevard. to come do church work and stuff like that. I'd do that. I'd get there. Them other ministers, man, they wouldn't give me no assignment. I'm trying to do stuff. Oh, we got that. We got that. I was standing in the parking lot at one particular time with these guys talking to them. Then all of them get in. I'm talking this for real. This is like a TV scene right here. <laughs> or like a, this going to look like, this like a comedy right here. All of them, all of them are getting in the we all talking now. I'm in the circle. We all talking. Then they all get in the car, talk about where they're going. They leave, and I'm standing right there in the parking lot by myself. Tears in my eyes. You know, I, I mean, I used to get hurt like that. I was talking about early on when I was really vulnerable because, you know, I, I was just coming. I wasn't even really, I can't even say I was coming up. I always witnessed. You no, know, I was on witnessing team and stuff like that. I always did that. I was always in my passion. Matter of fact, when I first got saved in my apartment, immediately I got on the phone and started telling my family. I didn't even know I was witnessing then. Amen. So I've always been one for souls. But, man, I used to get hurt. There's many, many stories that I could tell you, man, but I went through a lot. And if I wasn't uh, 
listen to this right here, have, have the strength and the Holy Ghost, the power to stand still and really have what? A real relationship with God. And, you know, just because you had a problem with people, that's not the problem with your pastor. Amen. You leaving the church because what people done to you, what the pastor did. Amen. And you don't understand what I'm saying. If God chose you to be there, it's the enemy's job to get you out. I used to have to do a lot of counseling and stuff like that. And then I began to, um, me and dad used to talk. And I, I used to tell, one thing I used to tell him, I tell everybody I'm talking about, I told him the truth. That's why sometimes he'll call me, he'll, tell, he'll ask me questions because he knew I would tell him the truth. I wasn't no yes man. I was very respectful, but I was never a yes man. I mean, one time I had to, I had to slip my tongue. We was in front of people. <laughs> we was around people, and they was trying to get me to do something. Dad sent right there. They standing around. And I looked at him, and I put him on the spot. I ain't mean to. I said, Dad, tell the truth now. <laughs> I think he was shocked, too. He was like, what? what? <laughs> but it just slipped because they were trying to get me to do something. And what I was scared to do, and I knew it wasn't for me to do. And I know... He would try to get me to do it. You understand what I'm saying? And I ain't want to just say no. But I would have found a way. I always find a way to get out and do something that I didn't want to do with him. <laughs> I always found a way. It was just. But, man, I don't forgot my point now. Y'all done messed me up. I don't forgot my point. <laughs> but I'm just saying, though, that's the kind of relationship we have. Always, 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 always told him the truth. Always told him the truth. Whatever he called, I tell him the truth. But that build a trust in him. That build, okay, I, I can rely on him for real. Amen. You know, and certain things he probably wouldn't ask me because you know I tell him the truth. <laughs> well, I, I asked so-and-so, where are the so-and-so at? Hey, come here, man. <laughs> I ain't gonna ask the other end time, man. We, you know, we, I always tell them the truth. But just, and you know, and pastors need people. I'm just saying that for these that are going to be here, I need you to tell me the truth. Don't have me looking crazy. Amen. I'm, I'm doing a little video. Tell me I got to lean in my, up here on my head. Some, give me a note or something. You know. <laughs> but you got people, they won't do that. They won't tell. I know when me and dad was in Haiti, he was finna, when we got to Haiti, man, it was so funny. But we got to Haiti, you know, all the people was running around the crusade grounds, real dusty. And y'all know he had did his hair. And you know he like how he did, amen. So he run around and he got and, it, and dust was in his hair. And he get around to preach. I said, Dad, I said, man, you need to put your hat on, man. I said, you can't. If y'all see a picture, I got a picture. I show he had that hat, but that's why he had a hat on because he had a pack of dust in his hair. We couldn't get it out because you know he loved to be with the people. They run around pray. You know he doing it. He run around. <laughs> he run around and pray to God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's just how he was. But you know, some people would let that man of God preach with that same dust in his hair. They would have let him preach with that dust in his hair. That's the path. They, what you mean? You love. You say you love him, don't you? When you love people, you cover them. You tell them the truth. Amen. Don't despise small beginnings either, saint. This is a small beginning. Don't despise. Amen. Don't worry about it. We're doing great things to God be the glory. Just like you know, the man said here. I don't know where I get that from. I call him a young man all the time. He's older than me. <laughs> but and he just received it. He just received it. But the man, the man was just telling you, you know, the man was telling you um, how he was speaking to a uh, pastor's wife. And he began to rehearse the things that we're doing while we're overseas. And he's like, man, how many women y'all got? And he told her, you know, I think we got about 10. 10, yeah, I don't even have to count my family now. But I have to count my family too. Amen. Then I have to count again, make sure I'm telling the truth. You ever been that small? <laughs> like, dog, let me make sure I ain't lying, I ain't exaggerate. <laughs> but yeah, 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 y'all got five, yeah. <laughs> it didn't be that I pointed ministry, man, when you had on five, man, like, dog, man, people, and they keep asking you. You know, you might not talk to somebody a month, you still got the same five. I mean, how are you growing up? Like, man, that's all you want to know, man, you ain't asking me. <laughs> like, dog, man, you know, we're going we gonna to get there. Amen. But she was like, man, y'all doing that much, as small as you are? You know why? Because I was taught. I, always, I give a count. We're able to, like right now, we're going to purchase. We can do it now. A lot of y'all don't even know we got our 501c3 now. It came and all that. We waited almost eight months for that jump. It just came. It just came right before this, you know, where we're about to celebrate this. That's, that's just amazing how God do the time. Amen. But I, we already, I already got the money in the bank for our chairs. I'm going to purchase the chairs. Uh, a chair, you know, stack them up in my garage, and then after that, I'm going to purchase the uh, sound equipment. I'm going to have everything beforehand 
So when we do get a building, we'll just be able to move right on into the building. But we already have money to do that. We got a savings account. We got a checking account. Money to do everything, do whatever we do. We got a church credit card. The, the balance is zero. Amen. Because I pay it every, you know, I pay I, I learned those principles. You know, that's how you, you'll get somewhere if you can just do that and you sacrifice. My wife knows about sacrifice. You know, I told her what offering we're going to get today. She's like, oh, but yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to sacrifice. God's going to bless us. Amen. So you got to understand when you got a man of God that sacrifice, just stick with him. Amen. Because he's going to be blessed. If you want to be blessed, just stick with a man of God. That's why I thank God for you, mom. You got to close now. Love you with all my heart. I told her when she came last week, she spoiled me now. I'm spoiled now. I don't know what you're going to do with me. <laughs> but, yeah, we just thank God for her. I thank God for all of y'all. I won't be able to finish this, man. We will finish it Friday, man. Hello, my friends. This is Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Centered Ministry. Perhaps you are blessed by the broadcast that you just viewed. If so, we want to hear from you. We want you to dial this number that's at the bottom of your screen right now because somebody's going to be waiting on just your call. The number is area code 904-713-3609. Again, it's Eric O. 904-713-3609. Until next time, we'll be waiting to hear from you.